Hi guys, this is Chantal and today I want to talk to you about what you can do in January right now in Zone 5. We are in mid-January and I have a bunch of gardening chores and ideas for you to do during this season so that you can kind of get your gardening blood flowing and uh, be outside if you are able to, if you don't have a snowstorm and just uh, kind of fulfill your gardening desires and needs. So here we go. <laughs> so today behind me I have this raised bed over here. I treat this raised bed more like a pot because it is very uh, shallow and it is also very thin. It does not hold on to any warmth inside of it and it's not connected to the soil directly. It's raised off the ground so uh, all the wind is going to circulate all around it. So I treat it like a pot. Uh, so uh, what I did is I went to the chicken coop, I grabbed some chicken manure and I brought it in here. I took off the irrigation uh, off the bed and I put down the chicken manure and I spread it evenly across the raised bed and then I grabbed some potting soil that I had sitting around and it had thawed because our temperatures have been uh, fluctuating drastically. We have been having some cold days and then some really warm days like today is I think in the 40s uh, like low 40s. Uh, right now it's starting to get into, th in the, into the 30s so this is really unusual for us. Normally we have snowstorm after snowstorm, which we are having snowstorms, but it's not, the snow is not sticking, <laughs> it's melting. And that's a bonus for me because that allows me to go outside and uh, just do what I need to do. After I put down the chicken manure, I put down the potting soil over the chicken manure to fill the raised bed uh, so that uh, the empty space that was created from the summer because of all the dirt that was taken out when I took out the sweet potatoes and the other plants that were there uh, I had to refill it with some more potting soil so I did that and then I uh, decided to plant stock in here because stock is a spring flower and it likes the cold and it needs a stratification period. What stratification simply means is that the seed needs to go through a cold period as if it is outside and uh, is going through the normal weather temperatures outside. Uh, it needs to go through these cold temperatures and then uh, to be able to germinate. So by putting it outside directly the seed is going to go through these temperatures and the seed will have an easier time to germinate. Some plants need stratification period, some seeds need stratification period like stock and others don't. Uh, you can, if you don't have a cold environment like we do, you, you can simply put your seeds in the fridge for about six weeks or so and then you can plant them outside. Like if you live in zone 9 or 10 for example, you could just simply put your uh, seeds in the fridge and then they would germinate for you. We live in zone 5, zone 5b to be specific. Uh, again, this is very unusual for us to have these kind of temperatures right now in January. Normally we have very low temperatures. Uh, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. I bought the stock seeds from uh, Baker Creek uh, this season, uh, about a month ago or so, I think. I did a whole seed haul on that and I'll leave a link for that video down in the description box below for you to check it out. And I had other plants also and I ended up doing some more winter sowing and I have another video on that as well. On Baker Creek seed packets, they have the seed depth, the time it takes to germinate, the um, uh, maturity date and uh, the spacing and all the stuff that you need to know and it, it's uh, right on the side usually and uh, so it's pretty easy to tell what you need to do and uh, on the seed packet also it's I believe it said that uh, it needs to uh, have a cold period to in order to germinate uh, and this is why I'm doing it right now because hey uh, less things for me to do in the springs because you know spring season is just super crazy and the more I can do now the better if I can plant something right now and have it pop up for me in the spring that is wonderful so anyways I did three rows of the stock and I spaced them almost 12 inches apart. I mean, some were closer and I don't really mind because it is, I'm treating it like a pot again and I want the plants to be super close together. I want it to look full and lush and I might need to 
that sweet alyssum in the front but I don't think I can honestly because the stalk is just going to be filling the whole area that's what I think because I did plant it pretty close to the edge in the front over here and in the back as well so I did three rows of that and uh, I'm super excited to see the stalk in the spring uh, and uh, to see all the blooms I don't think this is a repeat bloomer stock. I think this is just a one-time bloomer. Uh, but hey, I could just take the... I could either leave it here and enjoy it, or I could take some cut flowers indoors and enjoy them indoors as well. And this time I'm actually gonna try to use it maybe in some salads or stuff like that. And see, because I've never tried it uh, in salads. Or maybe I could just make some, I don't know, muffins and put the flowers on the muffin after it comes out of the oven or before it goes in the oven. I don't know, but it's something nice to try. <laughs> anyway, so the, the reason why I added the chicken manure is because this is sort of like a pot and uh, it needs some revitalization and the chicken manure is uh, full of organic mat matter. It is a great fertilizer. It's full of nitrogen. It's also slightly acidic. Uh, so if you live in a cold environment like me you can kind of repeat the same thing <laughs> that i did and uh, by taking a pot and just putting some uh, potting soil in it if you have any and if you can't find maybe you can order it online and uh, putting the planting it with whatever flower that you want or whatever vegetable that you want that requires stratification and sticking it outside <laughs> because that's all what i'm doing and this is really what this is uh, also uh, i did put back the irrigation again and i was having a hard time putting in the landscaping staples because the bo the bottom of were well, really most of the <laughs> the raised bed was frozen the soil is still frozen deep down uh, only like the first inch or so were not frozen uh, but since I added some potting soil to the top surface I was able to easily plant in it and I had no problem if you have pots that are sitting outside and you want to plant in them um, you could just do what I did add some fertilizer if you don't have any chicken uh, chickens any fertilizer will do and uh, you could add some uh, potting soil on the surface and plant directly in it and then uh, watch in the spring see how these flow flowers are going to pop up now if you live in a dry environment you might have to water the seedlings every now and then uh, the seeds every now and then because you don't want them to dry out especially when it's time for them to germinate like when spring season comes you have to really make sure that they stay moist otherwise they will die if they go through this moist and then super dry periods and then moist again those once the seeds start the sprouting process as soon as they dry out they're not going to sprout for you they are going to die so you want to make sure that they will stay moist throughout the sprouting period and after they sprout as well because they still need the water you don't want them to be super moist of course but you know because they could rot and die on you uh, so after I did this another thing that you could do is go ahead and fertilize any of your bushes with a an organic fertilizer and the reason why I'm saying with an organic fertilizer you don't want to fertilize them with a synthetic fertilizer is because synthetic fertilizers will uh, immediately release the fertilizer and give it to the plant and that's not what you want or with organic fertilizers what happens is that the they release the fertilizer slowly and also it is most of them from what I hear is that they are dependent on temperature so when the temperature outside is warm they are going to start releasing some of the fertilizer to the plant so that the plant can suck it up through the roots now I did sprinkle the uh, chicken manure over the surface of the soil but all the rain and the snow is just going to drive it slowly into the into the ground and then in the summer I'm going to mulch it a little bit with a thin layer of mulch just to prevent any weeds as well and uh, with a chicken manure what you want to be careful about is you don't want to put any fresh chicken manure now while during winter season that's okay because it's going to decompose uh, slowly before it starts feeding the plants especially if you live in a really cold environment uh, so it's not going to actually be feeding the plant yet it's going to be decomposing the chicken manure that i used was pretty well decomposed you could see it it's you know it's like falling apart it's like dirt almost 
uh, and it has been sitting in the coop for a while so we need I needed to clean the coop and the not all the coop but at least the area where the chickens lay their eggs so that we could have some clean fresh eggs instead of dirty eggs <laughs> and uh, this is a perfect you know uh, medium to fertilize your plants with again if you don't have any chickens that's okay or any animals that's fine you could just grab any organic fertilizer will do uh, so blueberries especially like an acidic soil is they like it around five or so yeah, between four and six and i think a happy medium is the best to have for them around five i think would be the best to have for blueberries like anything i believe medium is a good thing <laughs> like anything in life uh, so the chicken manure is slightly acidic so it's going to provide the blueberries with that acidity as it leaches into the soil um, and if I notice any chlorosis in the uh, spring season with the new leaves then I will give it some some more soil acidifier I'm hoping that that would ne not be the case uh, I mean Anyways, you have to give the blueberries some soil acidifier in the fall so that the plant can slowly absorb it and it can trickle down into the soil um, throughout the season so that when springtime comes and the plant has to leaf out and uh, and put out, you know, put out its new leaves, it will have the acidity that it needs to survive um, and to do well for you. So by adding a soil acidifier in the fall or even right now, uh, if you haven't yet, uh, then this the blueberry plants are going to do well for you if you live in an area that does not have an acidic soil. Now we live in an area that's very close to our soil over here. I don't know the whole area, but our soil where we live is uh, around uh, the pH of 6.8 and some areas are even 8 <laughs> so it's crazy how it varies from one small space to another small space in our land uh, so you want to test your soil, uh, soil and see what is the pH of your soil if you do have blueberries or hydrangeas or whatever it is because some of these plants do suffer uh, if they don't have a slightly acidic soil or at least a neutral soil um, my hydrangeas uh, well, the one hydrangea that I have so far uh, with this type of soil seems to struggle. It does want uh, acidic soil, so I have to provide it with an acidic fertilizer uh, or with some soil acidifier. Uh, so again, chicken manure is great, uh, goat manure is great, uh, or an organic fertilizer with a soil acidifier. And soil acidifier contains sulfur, uh, I think uh, two different types of sulfur, and uh, it's going to help your whatever shrubs you have to have you know to absorb that sulfur and uh, the sulfur is going to go into the soil and allow the shrub to absorb it and you know become healthy <laughs> because it allows it then to absorb the nitrogen properly and uh, that's the reason for the sulfur is so that the plant can uh, synthesize the nitrogen from the soil and I think other organic matter that the plant needs to have the green chlorophylls and filled in its leaves uh, anyways I there's I think I need to do more research on that topic but uh, from what I understand right now uh, that's that's where I stand anyways uh, I also ended up fertilizing the asparagus and asparagus uh, from uh, what I've read uh, from soil uh, from people who are asparagus growers and have been growing it for uh, years upon years and they're professional growers they grow it to sell uh, for uh, in the stores uh, they were saying the person that was right that wrote this article um, of, they also followed uh, you know the science uh, the scientific studies from uh, universities uh, and their experiences. Uh, so what they were saying is that asparagus prefers uh, a slightly neutral uh, soil rather than acidic soil is because it's because asparagus tends to get a root rot, Fusarium root rot, I believe, uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, and uh, it um, in acidic soil, and it seems to do better in a more neutral soil or even. Uh, slightly alkaline soil uh, like seven point something so I put some of the fertilizer uh, of the chicken manure on the asparagus I know the chicken manure is slightly acidic so if I notice that uh, 
the asparagus is struggling a little bit, what I could do is I could just grab some lime and sprinkle it over the surface and that will uh, fix the soil in that area so that the asparagus can uh, do better in a more um, neutral pH uh, soil. Uh, what If you have a acid, an acidic soil and you have asparagus, what you can do is add lime because lime brings down the pH of the soil. And if you have an acidic soil, and if you have a uh, high pH soil and you want to bring uh, your, your acidity levels down or your pH levels down, uh, then you would add sulfur. Uh, so this is what I did. These are some things that you can do. You can fertilize your shrubs or your uh, certain perennials uh, with organic fertilizer. Again, do not use synthetic fertilizer because synthetic fertilizer is going to release its nutrients immediately for the, to the, for the plants. Uh, so you want to use organic fertilizer because it's going to uh, release those nutrients slowly and easily. Also, what I do right now in some of the beds uh, is I grab uh, any um, organic matter from our households that we use like uh, for example uh, eggshells or uh, plant material or anything like that and I toss it in my beds and then in the spring I just gently till it in you don't want to kind of work the beds very uh, vigorously you just want to put the material in the bed and throughout the this entire season as this organic matter sits over the soil is uh, what happens is that it, does slight, it slowly decays and goes into the soil and feeds the soil um, and makes it rich in organic matter. What I would, you know, if I was able to put those organic matter into the soil directly, I would do it. But, you know, since we live in this kind of environment and I can't dig it into my soil because it's frozen, uh, then I just put it on the surface of the soil. And this is far from the house. No one sees it. It's not like it's in the front of the house or um, close to the house. And it doesn't really stink. I mean, I'm standing right next to it and all the cold weather and all that just kind of removes the smell and also the chicken manure I did not smell it at all because it's fully decomposed uh, so another thing you could do is uh, if you have any animals um, that you haven't cleaned up yet and I'm looking at some that I need to clean up but I'm not gonna have the time today to do that uh, you could go ahead and clean up any animals that you have uh, no pruning right now I don't do any pruning at this time uh, I do uh, most of the pruning uh, around late February, March, depending on the weather. I just follow the weather and I see and I do the pruning before anything leaves out, kind of when I start seeing the buds swelling and that's when I do uh, all my pruning. But right now, no pruning. Uh, again, you can winter sow a whole lot of stuff. You can even use the winter sowing method that requires the jugs and you can just uh, fill it with uh, some potting soil and uh, plant whatever you need to plant in it and put it outside leave the cap open and you're good I'm not doing this this year I decided not to do this this year I just want to simplify my life a little bit and I felt like that would just be a little bit too much for me this is why I'm planning planting everything directly in the soil this year I don't want to see how it's gonna do and if I see that it does well then I'll keep doing that. I won't do that directly in my raised beds in this area because this area gets super wet and the seeds would rot so I don't want them to be sitting in that kind of environment. Uh, I mean a lot of stuff s still sprout and they I have so many volunteer things but uh, because you know a lot of the seeds because I buy a lot of the seeds and they only give you a limited amount of seeds I can't just you know sprinkle all my seeds and hope that they would sprout and then have most of them rot I have to be careful with how I use my seeds if I have tons of seeds or if I saved tons of seeds I can scatter you know broadcast my seeds or plant them in the soil if the soil is a little bit uh, soft and and then when spring comes, whatever sprouts, sprouts. Uh, but uh, I don't have a lot of stuff that I have saved, or I do, but you know, not a whole lot of seeds, I should say, and not a whole lot of varieties. Uh, and I'm working on saving more seeds from the plants that I grow, but you know, I have to be careful on what I can save because I don't want things to cross pollinate. Uh, anyways, that's a whole topic on its own. So. Uh, 
I hope you guys uh, learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are new here, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.